To moderate this session, I would like to welcome back Sanjay Mohapatra, Chief Editor for Enterprise ITMEA. And I'd like to welcome our esteemed panel. We have Tran Viet Huan, CIO and Vice President of IT Baco Group Vietnam. Ibrahim Kamal Zadeh, Head of IT for Anabuda Automobiles. Alaska Bohari, Director for IT at Zulka Hospitals. And Damodaran Rahman, CTIO at Bayan Payments Limited, Saudi Arabia. And Noah Abdurrahman, Head of IT at Mohammed bin Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa Specialist Cardiac Center. Please welcome all our panelists. And once again, if you do have any questions during the session, you can click on that Q&A icon and put your questions forward. If we do run out of time, and I will be strict on time, gentlemen, just to note, you have 40 minutes only, 40 minutes only. I will come back in at that point, but any questions still to answer, you can contact our panelists directly. Enjoy your session and I shall be back. Over to you, Sanjay. Thank you, Kara, uh, for inviting all the panelists. You, you saved me from introducing one after another. Uh, so welcome back, uh, all the esteemed panelists, Nawaf, Hoan, Ibrahim, Ali, and Damu. Let's have a quick chat. How are you anyways? Uh, how has been your yesterday? It was an off day for you. How are you? How did you enjoy? My side first. Yeah, why not? So, so okay. So thanks, uh, Sanjay, and thanks for having me today for the technology summit and a walk for the Middle East uh, regions. Uh, yesterday was good. It just raining quite heavily just half an hour before. So just something from Vietnam that we have so far uh, very happy and very lucky that no uh, debt or the percentage for the debt rate is zero percent. Uh, so now even more than that, that we have no more COVID infected in a society within the 87 days. So that could mean that we already been back to the uh, restarted the economy and we then means we re-imaging our strategy for the ITs. A little bit about myself, uh, I'm 25 years in the IT industry working for different uh, side from the vendors including Microsoft and Cisco uh, with the director roles and also mainly for the CIO role for different industries like FMCG, FinTech, uh, cyber securities and the currently um, the group CIOs of the second largest collaborative taco in Vietnam. We have our, over 30, 23,500 employees uh, for Vietnam, Cambodia, Myanmar, in total, in five industry, we manufacturing for automotive. So we also the resellers of BMW cars, Kia, Mazda, and Peugeot. We also have bus then, and we also do the agriculture business as well as logistic and construction and commercial services. I'm very happy to be here to share some knowledge regarding the how to react on the technology for the post-COVID. Uh, thank you all and thank you. for uh, coming to esteemed CIO for the Middle East region. Thank you, and thank uh, you. for an uh, introduction, I'll, I'll request everyone, all the panelists, to give a very short introduction, maybe one minute each. Uh, Mr. Nawaf, uh, then Mr. Damu, Ali, and Ibrahim. Probably one, one uh, minute introduction, so then we can start. We'll have a fireside kind of chat and ask questions. <laughs> Invite question from the uh, attendees. Uh, well, um, um, I'm the former president of uh, Bahrain Internet Society, which is the uh, ISOC chapter uh, in Bahrain. And uh, currently, I am the um, uh, general secretary for Bahrain Smart Cities uh, Society. Uh, Career-wise, I have uh, 22, uh, 20, uh, 22 years of uh, experience in the field of ICT. I worked in various sectors, uh, in the banking, in the uh, public sector, uh, and currently working in the, in the healthcare sector, which makes us, in fact, uh, in the middle of the pandemic and, and uh, in fact, fighting the, the pandemic and being engaged 
uh, the front and in the back as well. Uh, well, I have, I have um, uh, experience in various uh, areas, and uh, be it uh, AI, uh, data, uh, be it uh, infrastructure systems, uh, cybersecurity. So I worked on all those areas. And I have uh, a good experience in, in, in those areas. I, I have managed, in fact, uh, uh, multi-million dollars uh, ICT project uh, successfully. And, uh, um, and currently, we have several, uh, uh, let's say, published uh, success stories in, 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 in several, um, uh, let's say, uh, uh, websites and organizations such as Microsoft and, and, and other organizations as well. All right, we'll help you in popularizing those stories, your case studies later on. No worries <laughs> about you. that. Welcome to Damo. Uh, not wasting time uh, for the in interest of the audience time also, maybe one minute. Uh, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, once again, thanks for Enterprise IT for inviting me for this panel. Uh, my name is Damo Raman. Short name is Damo. I started my career as a space scientist serving 14 years for the Indian Space Research Organization, followed by another 14 years in IBM, playing the various leadership role across the world. And last one and a half years, I'm working as a Chief Technology and Innovation Officer in one of the FinTech, which is working towards the Vision 2030 of Saudi Arabia. Uh, and uh, basically the domain perspective, I had an aerospace, uh, telecommunications, manufacturing, at the uh, finance. I think, uh, hope to have a nice discussion on post-COVID and the strategies and things like that. Thank you. Mr. Ali. Good afternoon, everyone. And thank you, Sanjay Sir, for this opportunity to speak in uh, this great forum. I'm the director of IT for Zuleika Healthcare Group almost now 16 years in healthcare field. So you can say from A to Z in healthcare, in the healthcare IT. And uh, moving forward for next good discussion again for families. Thank you, it's a small intro. Yeah. Mr. Ibrahim, you are the last but not the least man. Everybody knows you in that region. You have to unmute yourself. You have, you are mute. Sorry. Yeah. Good afternoon, everyone. I've been with industry for quite a long time, uh, around 27 years. A uh, big <coughs> portion of my career I've spent in automotive industry. Currently, I'm heading the IT department of Annabuda Automobiles. Uh, we are hosted in Dubai and uh, Northern Emirates. We are representing basically the German exclusive vehicles, uh, Porsche vehicles, Audi, and Volkswagen. Uh, my main competencies are uh, IT leadership, uh, software development. Actually, I've started my career with uh, being a software developer and uh, having good exposure into information security systems and digital transformations. Um, I help basically the businesses to define their digital business strategy and helping them to uh, have better customer experience. All right, thank you gentlemen for giving your introduction now since the uh, MC has given us the time that we let us start it, uh, I'll start. To fight uh, the the COVID nineteen. Now we have the the first uh, the first strategy was the uh, crush and contain where where they they lock down the entire uh, country and they they uh, they enforce lockdown until they fight uh, the the COVID nineteen. 
And this approach uh, proved to be successful in several countries like uh, uh, in South Korea and in, uh, in New Zealand and uh, in China. Uh, of course, uh, businesses will be hit uh, uh, dramatically. However, uh, it will be for a limited period of time and then they will be able to recover. Uh, <clears throat> this approach, of course, will, will uh, normally to, to, uh, to uh, eliminate or let's say to, to uh, control the, the pandemic itself. Uh, the other approach, and here, in fact, we have most of the countries are following this approach, which is flatten the curve and fighting the, the, the COVID-19. This approach uh, will not impose, let's say, a total lockdown. However, will strain the economy and will put a lot of pressure on the economy. Uh, I will talk about this in, in, in a minute. And the third, the third strategy is the, uh, the uh, sustain and the support uh, the community. I call it the Swedish model, uh, where in fact they lift the economy open and this will have the minimal impact on the economy, of course, but at the same time requires a robust healthcare system in the country and we require a lot of cooperation uh, from the people themselves. And we require, let's say, a mature uh, people to be able to follow the guidelines and uh, control the pandemic. Now, uh, going back to the, to the second strategy, which is flatten the curve, and this is followed by most of the countries. What happens in this strategy, businesses need to survive, to survive for a long period of time. And therefore, um, it has been approved by using technology, uh, technology becoming crucial for, the, for those businesses to survive as long as possible. Now, normally businesses in, in, in this approach, what they need to do, first of all, they need to respond, to respond to the crisis itself. And here they need to take immediate actions to keep uh, people safe. They need to uh, continue their essential uh, uh, operations and functions in order to stay in business. Uh, the second step that they need to take, which, which we are currently in this, in this stage, is the recovery stage, where they require to restart the, the activities, they need to reopen their, their businesses, they need to revisit their strategies, and uh, especially the technology strategies and the digital transformation strategy within the organization. And of course, at the third stage, which we are going to reach once we, uh, let's say, um, once this stage is over, is the, uh, let's say, the renew or the uh, reset uh, for the businesses where they need to, let's say, uh, prioritize their strategies. They need to rewrite, in fact, uh, their, their uh, uh, strategies. They need to use the learnings that they have uh, that, that, that accumulated during the, pandem the pandemic in order to be able to, to uh, sustain in the future. So uh, those are mainly the approaches that organizations uh, need to follow. I believe okay. at this stage, uh, all the organizations, they need first of all to build, to build resilience. So they need to uh, be able to live in such crisis and they need to, uh, let's say, uh, uh, build a, a sustainable future for their existence in the future. Because we saw that many organizations have been hit big time and many organizations went out of business. So it's very critical that we focus right. in, in those areas. Okay, okay. You said that revisiting uh, the strategy. So uh, uh, from that point of view, I think Damu, uh, you being uh, in uh, finance sector, the, the organization Binance Pay is a kind of startup, and uh, it's very critical for you uh, from the uh, you know strategy point of view, um, and you are also becoming very important for the consumers, right? What is your view? What is your revisiting strategy? Uh, yes, Sanjay. Uh, basically, I think uh, you nailed down. I think uh, so. I'm from Bayanpe startup and fintech, right? So, so it's, it's the combination is really making us more critical how we are sustaining after the COVID uh, 19. Uh, I could see that I think Nawaf has talked about the uh, general strategy how the organization 
uh, and in my discussion i would like to a little bit uh, you know focus on you know uh, startups and small and medium uh, organizations which has got much more challenges than the bigger organizations uh, not limited to uh, so so my uh, few cents uh, for the viewers basically those who are into the smaller uh, organizations and medium and uh, you know small enterprises uh, i would like to give them how part of their strategy that's when i would like to just uh make the conversation more interesting uh i think now i think pretty much we need to really change our mindset i think that's the first strategy one should have it because the things pre covid it's not going to be the post covid right it's a new norm so first of all in the strategy particularly in the management i think we need to have a culture change of the mindset to convert the threat into an opportunity pretty much right so if you are, don't have that i think the threat itself will bring your uh, you know business down and how do we do that so that's an it's easy to preach but how to practice so that's when i think my view is uh, every leadership and along with the team i think we should start the strategy of you know innovation and disruption okay it looks to be a very very uh, elaborated and open ended but i will i would like to make this definition very short the innovation i'm not talking about the eureka innovation right anything which you did today as ai personal the previous presentation he mentioned you go back next day and you do the same activity uh, quickly and it's more convenient to you and it's more cost effective that's what in my definition of innovation it is for right for us to really think the change of the way what we do it and disruption don't worry about which area you are working it is a time for you to think very disruptively how you can keep your business as a core and you can put it across so i put a simple just framework just for the uh, viewers to you know remember and uh, implement I, I talked about the ROCS framework. Basically, I think R stands for reinvent. I think you are here to reinvent. What do you do that? Am I doing the right one? Do I need to continue or not? I think that's a very important uh, exercise. One has to do that. The second, my O is for the objective. Generally, when we talk about the strategy, strategy is always it's a very high level. But at least for the next one to one and a half years, I think our strategy has to be uh, very very objective. What it means is. uh you know it has to be very close to the reality in the strategy we put our goals as a short term medium term and the long term uh, my a uh, sincere advice is i think we need to have a short term goal in strategy and start making it the third one is very very important is the cost effectiveness right so it has impacted very heavily as nawaf was mentioning and uh, you know cost effective become the paramount and uh, you know uh, having the new technology uh, you have to spend but you need to strike the right balance so cost effectiveness become very very important and finally since because working from home and on what not because of the covid the security is becoming very very crucial and particularly industry like us which who are handling the other people money it's becoming the very critical so these four are key strategies and then perhaps i think i'll also take it 10 seconds to just tell that how you do each and everything you don't do the reinvent and keep doing right that doesn't make sense when you have your strategy you just see that my strategy is having an agility can i do this strategy in fast enough can i scale it when my business grows up and can i give the good up time the resilience so these three parameters you need to have along with this with the three dimensions of people like you know uh, sorry three dimensions like uh, you apply this strategy into your hardware roadmap software roadmap and very very importantly human resources because now they have to change so these are all the few how to uh, strategize from my point of view sanjay all right thank you very much uh, damo uh, i'll ask uh, same question with an additional question of uh, uh, you know his strategy the first question and two questions are com combined and revisiting the technology road map or rejigging uh, to one because he has got he has in, he is in multiple business he is controlling a, a conglomerate one your perspective okay thanks sanchez regarding the re mapping the strategy from it uh, i would say for the post covid i would see the thing into two uh, angles number one is in term of ties and number two is in term of the business model in term of ties i would say in very short and medium terms now we focus on a technology with a very short payback because during the covid time every company uh, suffer many thing so we had to invest into something that really quick quick very short payback 
Does it something like AI chat prop RPA? Exactly. I love the, the previous section from the Think Sense, a gentleman who present on that. And for the long term, uh, the company need to transform the business uh, digitally. And if the, the business already been transformed digitally, so they have to level up in a, an advanced level uh, to, to capture with the new normal now, because the, the behavior of the customer now shifting from the offline to the online. That's in terms of time frame and in terms of the business model. So I would say in terms, I would say speak into front end and the back end. From the front end, from the customer and marketing side. So for the automotive industry, for the, our showroom, we plan to do something relating to the online showroom. We, we deploy the VR, virtual realities to the showroom, uh, 360 degrees on, on, show, on our showroom. And also we increase something related to the customer experience online. We give them the testing opportunity online instead of going to the showroom to do. On the back office side, so what I mean is the R&D manufacturing, also our back office of our operation. We revisit, of course, with the whole organization for the structure, for the cost, and then IT is also a part of that. So we do something like to input EPM, we input RPA in our, in our process to enhance that. And of course, with the digital twin for our construction business. So that, that's something what we call in as the Tau, we call that intelligent crow after the, the post COVID. That's something from my side. All right, thank you. I'll come back to, I'll come to so, uh, Mr. Ibrahim, uh, you are into retail, uh, automotive retail industry, uh, you know, into business. Uh, uh, what is your kind of looking at the technology? Um, what is the kind of uh, revisiting of technology that you are planning now uh, for making it more available or enable your uh, workforce to also enable using VR or a certain technology was the, the way uh, one uh, uh, narrated. Yeah, I think um, uh, the, the COVID-19 brought actually serious damages to many people and the businesses. And uh, the, the changes is basically has happened so rapidly and so quick that practically companies have got no, have got no basically time to deal with that. I think at this point of time, we are living all of us in an era of, uh, of a global economy and economies are very much interrelated. Uh, the financial uh, sectors is very much integrated together so that if you have any kind of uh, changes in any company, any, any, uh, any of the company automatically, you will see the same reflection in other businesses as well as. So uh, I think post-COVID landscape is going to be um, very uncertain. Um, the damages are not going to be uh, known to us at this point of time. Perhaps it is going to be a very much de depends on the, on, the, on the factors such as the duration or the severity of the pandemic in coming months, and as well as the contribution of the local economy uh, to, to, the, to the sectors. So uh, I think to me, the recovery is going to be very volatile and uneven for many of the companies. Companies, they will have very difficult time to restart and to reopen again. Um, we have seen how hospitality and aviation sectors are hit very badly by, by the crisis. And uh, these two sectors practically having big, um, basically, contribution to the GDP of, of, of the country uh, because of the fact that, you know, the guests and, and, and the passengers, they should be available uh, physically at, at the site. So um, from other side, I think you can see also some of the companies such as uh, Amazon, uh, they, they got, uh, they gained the momentum basically, and they have been uh, very much profitable during the, the, the crisis time because of the fact that they, their platform uh, was, uh, was, the readiness of their, their, their platform was very well. 
to basically uh, uh, support the new norms. In general, I think at this point of time, uh, there are perfect storm of, uh, of the challenges for many companies. They have very difficult time to, to, to come back to the business. And perhaps at the, in the beginning, they have to uh, try to, um, as, as first thing, I think they have to try to provide some healthy environment uh, of operations for their employees and, and the customers, because we have, should not forget that we have still many of these uh, uh, businesses who are having touch base kind of uh, contact, uh, business contact with their customers. So I think that is also one of the prerequisites for the businesses. The second thing, I think many of the businesses are having legacy systems in place, which is not going to uh, support the, the new norms and they cannot basically uh, absorb that volume of the connections from uh, other side. Uh, perhaps uh, the security is one area that this type of systems is perhaps is not open or the systems that they're using uh, provide a very limited amount of the flexibility. And uh, the other area I think uh, is an area that uh, the maturity of the technology we don't have at this point of time. Uh, we are talking about contactless uh, kind of business transaction, but the fact is that uh, the technology is not so far matured and then many technologies should furthermore develop to support the business. Okay, Brad, I think, I think what you are saying are actually pertinent, but the thing is that we are not at all ready. Uh, if you look at uh, from the hindsight side, it is, it, we are thrown to the situation, uh, technologically, mentally also, physically also, we are not allowed, we are not ready to work from home. Okay, with, the, with this, I'll come to uh, Mr. Ali, uh, uh, being a person, you belong to an industry which is the which is called warriors, COVID warriors, the doctor, nurses. You have been there. Uh, you know all the responsibility is, is on your shoulder, uh, enabling these people. So, what has been your experience? Was, was it what was the degree of your preparedness? And are you planning any revisit to technology or what is this? Uh, actually, all my friends have mentioned about the strategies of post-COVID. And uh, I am also on the same page that uh, COVID actually taught us like, you know, how the technology is important in our life. And uh, if you see uh, in, in the healthcare industry, especially in the healthcare industry, if you see like doctors and nurses who are the real heroes for COVID who are attending the COVID patients and everything, but enabling them a technology through, you know, back in from the IT side, what we did it is uh, that was also uh, commendable actually to uh, give the services to the COVID patients. And uh, if you if you talk about the strategies of post-COVID in a technical language, I must say that we need to format our hard drive and not only the normal format, but it should be a low level format where you need to upgrade yourself, uh, accepting the new normal. And, uh, you know, this pandemic has uh, taught us about uh, technology implementation, taught us about business continuity planning, disaster recovery, taught us about uh, how important is uh, digital transformation, and uh, of course, uh, you know, if you have seen about the vestiges, we used to do a lot. And now if you see, there is kind of a limitation in everything. If you guys have like, everybody can now have very limited uses of uh, each and everything about technology, about normal life, whatever you have to, you have reduced going to the shopping mall, you are going only when it is necessary, it is required. So all these things has been, uh, uh, has been again uh, came to our life. 
where uh, we can understand the value of uh, technology value of uh, you know business continuity planning and if you talk about uh, work from home yeah that's a new term and the uh, new norm is going to come where we have seen the uses of uh, work from home that also has like you know good uh, it, it it gives us the good insight and uh, still you know uh, about the social distancing see uh, connecting virtually always you know i don't uh, really see that connecting virtually is it, it's it's okay to connect virtually but we really need that kind of uh, uh, not full social distancing but the way we have in our so uh, society if you see in the asians and everything we like gatherings and uh, you know we like that meetings so you have to be careful and uh, you 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 use both you use when the virtual is required definitely yeah and when you use uh, this kind of meetings that is also required so so yeah uh, this is the like you know strategy wise if you see you need to actually work on these three things which already mentioned by all my colleagues that yeah you have to use the actual technology as mr ibrahim also said the maturity level is required for the technology implementation which is actually it will take time it will come in the next 3 4 5 years when ai implementation will come in effect then uh, i'm sure the business continuity planning disaster recovery is very 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 important and as mr damo said about uh, security which is again it's a real part when you implement any technology you have to see the risk in what in it and you should do that uh, rart planning and uh, implement that uh, technology in the right way so that is from my side thank you all right uh, thank you only uh, the, the uh, valid point you raised that uh, we are not uh, special the asians we believe in meeting each other but don't you think that we are wired that way that from the beginning we have been taught my, our uh, it's there in our dna that we will go meet people it's wired i think if we can change that wiring little bit we can uh, be adapt to this kind of situation you know virtually we can uh, talk to each other we can have about uh, learning system education everything anyways that's a different thing I, okay I, last i last just piece. sorry sorry i just want to i just want to mention here in healthcare industry and if you see specially patient wants to meet doctor physically okay and and you know uh, our dr zulekha said that's a very good thing is the magic of caring touch okay when when the doctor gives that magic of caring touch to a patient i think half of the illness gone with that particularly you know by that caring touch and that that thing is missing when you do everything virtually so that's what i'm to say here oh, all right then thank you so we have got 5 6 minutes left so we'll have to wait Uh, fast in answering uh, the uh, next questions uh, that is that are going from me uh, what are the three technologies which are going to drive the uh, you know or accelerate post uh, covid uh, activities or development can you uh, can i start uh, from damu probably since you are doing lots of experiment these days one minute you need to take one minute each yeah thank you i think the three things uh, which i feel very very important in the post covid i think we talked about the problems of readiness and things like that right so that we have to be very nimble in terms of my three uh, mantras we call about can you be agile scalable and resilient so so my view is the three things which i talk about first you have to look into your infrastructure if you are already into a non primers and with the, you know the legacy systems i think it's it's, it's a time to look into you know can you migrate to cloud because cloud is is uh, basically a, a reward for this you know technology uh, universe if you ask me so infra one has to look into move to the cloud should be one of the strategy 
when you talk about the application, uh, I'll come to the solution. Basically, I think pretty much most of the applications are legacy. As Ibrahim was mentioning, it's a monolith. It's a good time to really look into how to decompose my applications into the microservices. Uh, is it easy to say that done? Because you, you also have to follow some of the patterns, right? For example, the strangler pattern, which you can see, it's a non-critical application to start, you know, decompose from the monolith and then you can make your application. So application uh, is very, very uh, critical in terms of the architecture. The third one is the productivity, right? The cost becomes the very key. And if you are not into the spray of automation, you, it's a high time to really look into the where you can do the uh, as a person or into the you know your uh, technology automation. So that should be the paramount. And along with AI and ML, right? So AI and ML you cannot really jump into. Uh, the world are organizations you have the good amount of data, make the data monetization using the AI and ML. So summary. You look into the strategy of infrastructure to the cloud, application monoliths to microservices, and productivity get into the automation. These three has to be there. Okay, I'll, I'll uh, come to uh, Ibrahim with same question. Three technologies that are going to accelerate post-COVID uh, you know, activities. Yeah, I think um, the importance of the technology has never uh, seen so bullish. We have seen the dependency on the technology during the crisis time, where we could work from home and as well as doing our online shopping, doing our financial transactions. So uh, the technologies, I think the, the remote working technologies is an area that is going to come up. Uh, it will take lots of attention in these areas in, in, in coming days. Um, the, the, we have seen that how uh, uh, COVID-19 uh, uh, brought to the table the working uh, from home. However, there are some uh, issues attached to the working from home than perhaps is non-technical issues like, uh, you know, providing the employees with kind of self-managing uh, and, and self-organizing uh, concept. Uh, so these are the areas that, you know, uh, it will be on the rise. Uh, there are also, I think the employers are very much uh, the interested of understanding and measuring the employees' productivity and efficiency. So that, 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 that those, which is part of also that, that area, basically. Uh, I agree with Damo also, uh, the, the cloud services will take also lots of attention. We have seen during the COVID-19 crisis, how supply chain can be disturbed so quickly and then so that you are not having access to your uh, on-prem solutions, uh, services which is running in the data center. So most likely I think in coming days, we will see that many of this on-prem on, on services going to the cloud. This can be also a specific and dedicated services such as uh, DMS, if in terms of the automotive industry, uh, the dealers will try just to uh, shift to, to uh, basically to the, uh, to the cloud. And business continuity and uh, disaster recovery, we know that this is also an area which are very costly and critical for many of the industry, banking sector, health, healthcare sector, you name it. So this will go to the cloud. Okay. Uh, as a third, as yeah, as a third one, uh, I I I think I should uh, name the digital transformation. Also, this is one area of attention. I think COVID nineteen made uh, very much uh, competitive uh, landscape for many businesses. So basically, if the businesses wants to take care of, of market share, to get more market share, they have to look into new uh, innovatives. They have to look into the, the creating competitive advantages. And this is, can be done only by reshaping and redefining or perhaps their business, uh, digital business strategy. It is not an, uh, easy job it is a journey i think the cios are uh, the the best choice uh, playing a, a change agent but i do believe that digital trans, uh, transformation is the basically is the key differentiator for the companies for their success and failure in coming days all right thank you 
So we are getting a ticker from the MC that you have got only three minutes now. So you'll have to stick to three minutes next. So same question to Mr. Nawab, three technologies that are going to drive post COVID things. Of course, we have got so many questions. If you wish, you can answer those uh, questions in chat. Fine. So uh, uh, first of all, I agree with Ibrahim when uh, he mentioned about the digital transformation. Uh, digital transformation, in fact, uh, has been changed from being a luxury or a partial need to a must nowadays. So uh, many organizations uh, started, in fact, uh, uh, started to rethinking digital strategies and uh, already started, uh, let's say, to, to focus more into this roadmap, the, the digital transformation. Because as Brian mentioned, it is a journey. So it is not like a project that you're going to do and then you will be digitally transformed. It is a journey that you need to take and it, it has to be within the DNA of the organization. Now, uh, one another area, and I believe this is the fuel of all the technologies and the trends that we have today, is the data. Now, we have been hearing for the past years that data is the new oil. Now, the pandemic itself have, already has proved that data, yes, it is the new oil. And with data, you will be able to, let's say, uh, overcome whatever sort of challenges that you may face uh, in your organization. So data analytics and, 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 and data itself, I believe it is the fuel for all the trends, the technological trends that we are having uh, today is like AI, uh, even cybersecurity, um, even for the robotics. So AI uh, or data is, is, is very critical. Now, a third area that I believe that we're going to see it is transforming, as Dama mentioned, the uh, cloud. Now, uh, using the cloud, of course, have um, uh, have changed the, the speed in order to, to, to operate and in order to deploy uh, IT projects. To be frank with you, uh, in, the, in the world of IT, many CIOs, if you talk to them about, uh, uh, let's say, certain requirements, they talk to you in months and in years in order to meet those requirements. All the projects of IT normally, they take years to deploy. Business requirements today is, are immediate. So they want the solutions to be available today and now. They, they are not able to wait until you deploy systems and projects. And therefore, cloud can, can help a lot in achieving those requirements in days instead of, let's say, months and years. Gentlemen, thank you. Uh, that has been an incredible and insightful discussion. There are many questions coming through, which I encourage you panelists to please feel free to answer on the chat. Please feel free to answer those questions as there are many coming through. I must stop you now though. Thank you so much to all of our panelists. A huge big thank you.